Welcome everybody to Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk about all things security. We all know that sanctioned cloud applications are used for core enterprise business practices. And as a result of that, they contain scores of sensitive business data. So unsanctioned cloud applications are also used by a lot of employees for similar reasons, but this is without the knowledge of um, or approval of the IT teams. So securing both types of applications, sanctioned and unsanctioned, is key to building a strong data security defense for every cloud-first organization. I'm Carmine Clementelli from the Pro Marketing Team at Palo Alto Networks. Uh, we have here Santiago Polo from the Casby Consulting Engineering Team to join us today in this episode of Security Speakeasy. We will talk about best practices to keep in mind when securing sanctioned and unsanctioned SaaS applications in your organization. Thank you, Santiago, for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Carmine. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Yeah. So, so Santiago, let's start with um, the SaaS applications that are sanctioned. What are the specific best practices that you can recommend uh, that uh, we should look for when uh, we want to secure data in our sanctioned SaaS applications? Yeah, it's a great question. So, and it's not always a simple, straightforward, easy answer there either. But the good part about sanctioned SaaS applications is that that's where we have the most control. Now, we also have the most sensitive data usually there as well. And so we have to apply uh, some of those administrative controls so that we protect that data, right? Uh, in this particular case with sanctioned applications, you know, we can put in things in line if we want to apply inline controls, but really cloud-based controls are the, the best tool that we have because we can reach in there with APIs, we can find that data at rest, it's already out there. And we can start looking at the exposure of that data, looking at where that sensitive data lives to start applying policy to maybe control that exposure or uh, remediate problems that we might have within that, that data. Uh, and also, you know, I mentioned inline enforcement, very useful tool. We might want to put policies in place to block sensitive things from going out to those applications, but it's not always uh, the best option, right? We, we have users that are either inside the organization or outside the organization who are going to go directly to that cloud service without going through our inline enforcement. Uh, so they're going to completely bypass proxies and firewalls and, and other things that we might have in place. And so uh, in in these cases, API-based controls, again, the best option that we've got to be able to reach in there uh, and, and tackle that problem. Uh, I see this more and more now, especially as you know, we've, we're in this era of a pandemic where we have more and more work from home models. We have, we have a lot more users that are remote. Um, and we see these cases where yeah, they'll, they'll share a file with somebody outside the organization whose security posture we obviously can't control. Either they'll, you know, they'll create a public link for a file, maybe to make things more uh, accessible for themselves, either on their phone or their iPad, so that they can, you know, work from the couch <laughs> or, you know, or work from from uh, Del Taco. That's like my favorite uh, fast food joint to eat at. So, you know, they, they'll do that, and then what happens is they then publicly expose something sensitive, not really thinking about. That, that part of the problem. Uh, and then now anybody with the public link can just come around from the outside, again, never going through our inline enforcement. And then they download that data and it's gone. And so that, that creates a lot of serious issues. And in this case where they're sharing with people outside the organization, right, they share a folder with somebody, again, whose security posture we don't control. That person just uploads a, uh, maybe an infected Word document, infected PDF, something like that. And, and now through the magic of OneDrive Sync or Box Sync or a lot of these other synchronization apps, that file just lands on all these internal desktops and, and we're a click away from having some sort of compromise event. And so that's, that's a problem too that we got to address. Again, only addressable with cloud-based controls. Yeah, yeah, great, Santiago. I think these SaaS applications that are sanctioned are something that we cannot live without anymore. Yeah. I think about Office 365, Slack, uh, Workday, uh, you know, can you imagine uh, oh, life without yeah. Slack these days? I, <laughs> we, <laughs> I mean, we as Slack users here, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call. Pick up the phone. <laughs> yes. So, so Santiago, but I think you would also agree with me that there are also thousands of unsanctioned SaaS applications that the users can access every day and nobody oh, knows gosh. about. Yeah. These are just tolerated. They have to be tolerated in every organization, but uh, some of them are very risky. 
So these are the so-called shadow IT because IT doesn't know about this. Right. So can you give us some best practices for securing unsanctioned SaaS applications? Yeah, I mean, the big problem with this is that we see new applications all the time. Every day there is some new SaaS application that has popped onto the market uh, that someone has adopted. And so we run into this problem of, of how do we protect the data from going into these, these unsanctioned applications that we've never heard of? And what sort of risks are we carrying with these applications that we've never heard of? Are, are they meeting our particular compliance requirements, right? Uh, and, and what sort of sharing and collaboration is going on there where the data might be getting exposed? We don't even, and we don't even know, right? So we have to have great visibility into uh, what's happening there. Uh, so we have to solve this shadow IT problem by, by gathering visibility there. So that's one, a key, key component there, key best practice there is, is getting better visibility with that, right? Uh, and then uh, the second is, is from there, once you understand the risks, you've got visibility. Now we can understand what, what's happening, what the risks are with those applications. Now we can start enforcing policy around them. And so uh, the, the keys to this are really, you know, first applying that visibility. And this might come from monitoring logs on existing devices uh, and then creating more visibility around those logs. So you know, we've, we've developed some tools around that to be able to give you better risk characteristics, better visibility into the compliance postures of these applications. In our case, we're leveraging machine learning to do that so that we can uh, better understand in a more rapid way and keep up with this explosion of growth. Uh, but, the, but the ultimate goal then is to really understand what the, the users are using uh, and then start you know, moving toward a place where we can affect policy there. Because it might be you know, that the users are using an application that's perfectly legitimate and we want to allow that or we want to uh, maybe just uh, tolerate that or maybe they're using something super risky, in which case we might want to block that completely, right? Uh, but it might also be that we allow with granular controls. I want to allow this application that does carry certain risk, but I don't want to allow the users to be uploading sensitive data there. We want to apply DLP to those files that are getting uploaded that might carry compliance related information or intellectual property, or I don't know, it could be PII or PCI or legal or financial information. And so different things like that. Uh, but, but if we start to first get visibility and then move toward policy, then those are the real best practices that we can apply there. Well, that's great, Santiago. Uh, this is very useful information and I'm sure our viewers will benefit from these insights that you share with us today. Thank you, Santiago, for joining us today at Security Speakeasy to talk about the best practices around securing sanctioned and unsanctioned SaaS applications. And thanks everyone for watching. If you like the show, click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and visit paloaltonetworks.com to learn more about our innovative CASB solution.